I'm painting at a little bit of an angle so that it, it, uh, it the gravity comes down and my my bead of, of wetness is at the bottom, and that way I can uh, I can just um, um, just work my way right down. Man, I've got something exciting for you. Uh, another brilliant brilliant painter, a master, Michael Holter. Welcome, Michael. Hey, thank you, Eric. It's fun to be here, and uh, <clears throat> thank you for the kind words. It's fun to be anywhere, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Virtually well, or not, whatever. As things heat up in the world, and, and they are heating up, uh, it's really nice to be able to focus on art and keep our heads in the game and just uh, forget about everything else. Don't you agree? Yes. Yes, it is. It's it's a good it's a good thing, and uh, a lot of people are having a, a lot of uh, a lot of enjoyment from this uh, this thing that we love to do and uh, love to talk about, and uh, so it's 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 really great. And I appreciate all that you're doing to advance the, the 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 art world with all the things you're doing. It's great. Thank you. We're all in it together, man. We're just trying to we're trying to keep our our family together and keep everybody's heads in the right place. So, what are you going to do today? Uh, I'm going to do a, a, just a small painting that is a, um, a waterfront kind of scene, <clears throat> and the, the object of it is really going to be um, uh, if you're a plein air painter or if you are just you know what painting indoors, whatever it is. One of the things that's uh, always good to be able to do is to find subjects that you can get done rapidly and not labor over. Sometimes you don't have the time, or sometimes you just have a subject that uh, that just needs to be treated in a certain way, and so I'm going to do a <clears throat> I'm going <clears> to <throat> excuse me concentrate on kind of a backlit thing, so it'll be a, a, a little bit less time consuming than something where there's a lot of uh, light and shadow, and you know, uh, and you can do that with a lot of different kinds of subjects and, and create some pretty interesting dramatic uh, results. So that's cool. basically what I'm going to do today. Well, that sounds like fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so I'm going to drop you off for a second and then we will, uh, we will continue in just a minute. All right. The plan. Uh, we had a really terrific week uh, right before realism live started. I just got back the day before it was in uh, in uh, New Hampshire, Fall Color Week, a lot of the color had kind of left us, but we still had a great time and a lot of wonderful stuff. If you're not familiar with us, uh, we're a publisher that does Plein Air Magazine. Plein Air Magazine, in case you don't know, is the number one selling art magazine in America at Barnes & Noble stores, the biggest distributor in America. And so we're pretty excited about that. And we're now also now very excited about being in 278 Michaels stores. That's a a big thing for us. If you want to know more about what we do, uh, we have a everything we do page, which is at streamlinepublishing.com slash everything, streamlinepublishing.com slash everything. And there's things in there that you, you never have imagined that could be like, it's like Disneyland for artists. What can I tell you? We, I probably shouldn't use that word. I'll probably get sued. I don't want to do that. Okay. So uh, anyway, that's kind of what I've got going on today. Okay, so I think I've got all my announcements out of the way. It's getting easy. I like easy. And let me just double check to make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, now I haven't missed a thing other than back to Michael Holter. Here I am. Here I am. So, Michael, I guess I should probably show a little bit of your work. Oh. All right. I yeah. just happen to have some things that, that uh, we pulled in. Uh, first off, Let's see here. You're going to be part of Watercolor Live. That's pretty exciting. And so yeah. there's there's your icon for that. But I'm going to show you a couple of, of uh, images that Michael has done in watercolor. Fabulous pieces. That's, that's oil. That's <laughs> Is that you? That's an oil, yeah. Uh, I didn't know you did oil. Yeah, I've got some oils um, that I do. I used to paint more in oil, and then um, watercolor has kind of gotten the best of me lately, so... Yeah, well, I knew that wasn't watercolor the minute I saw it. I thought, how could that be? Uh, fabulous work. Fabulous. Um, wow. Well, it just keeps coming. The fall color in New Hampshire, this reminds me. It was so, so stunningly beautiful. Oh, I like that. And, and what I like about this painting is the simplicity of it. Really beautiful. Okay, so I, I'm gonna, uh, I should mention that Michael has a couple of videos with us. 
Uh, this one's called Seven Steps, Seven Steps to Watercolor Landscapes. And there's a couple different demos in that. And then the other one is Seven Steps to Watercolor Portraits. Everything's about seven steps. So, uh, those are available at uh, Creative Catalyst Productions or Lil at All Art So, uh, Michael, let's get into your, uh, your lessons. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to. Um... Hopefully this will all flow nicely. I'm going to show you a couple things here on my um, uh, my screen, and it should feed over there nicely. Um, what I'm going to do today is uh, work on a uh, backlit uh, subject. Now, the one on the left, this boat scene on the left there, is um, the kind of sky I want to work with, the colors I want to work with. I want that. This was a uh, early morning in uh, the Rockport, te Texas area on the Gulf Coast. Uh, Beautiful day. It was a plain air event. We were out there, a bunch of people painting, and uh, it was great fun to paint. But the sun, you know, that light changes pretty rapidly. Uh, the one on the right was a, a photo taken in Florida on the on the Gulf Coast again, but that was uh, <clears throat> more like a noontime shot. So the sun is high, but you can see that it is somewhat still a silhouetted form. So I've got these shapes. I'm going to use the one on the right for the boats, for the for the thing I'm for the main structure, but I'm going to use the the color scheme from the one on the left because I think it has a little more drama, and it should be a little more interesting to do. Um, so this is uh, this is my painting area. I guess you can see that, okay, Eric? Right? Absolutely. And you're not, you're there, right? You're not sleeping or anything now. Well, I am sleeping. I, I actually was going to use this opportunity to take a nap, but now you've blown my cover. <laughs> okay, go to sleep. Uh, now, this is uh, this is a fun, a fun, simple subject in many ways. That, you know, you, people look at this, they, water frustrates some painters, and then, uh, you know, a complex uh, series of objects like this could be complicated, but I'm going to make it simple. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, it's going to be a wet and a wet um, treatment here. And I'm going to just start by wetting down the paper and <clears throat> creating a, an area where I can where I can drop some color in. Now, I probably will try to leave a few little white, white areas in this area of these um, <clears throat> the boats and the dock and the you know, some of this in here, uh, probably, um, if it works, I will. Sometimes you just lose them, and then that's okay. You have to come back and and do something different. And I, I'm not opposed to using opaques. I'm a, you know, in watercolor, um, there's sort of a, a school of thought that you never use white. You only use the white of the paper. And I feel that's kind of old school in many ways. Um, if, you know, even even some of the greats, and when John Singer Sargent was doing uh, watercolor at the end of his career, he painted uh, some of his paintings. You can see the cracking of the of the white gouache <clears throat> in the surface. So he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, who who can argue with John Singer Sargent? And uh, if he was willing to use some opaques and some whites and things like that, then I think I can too. So I'm going to start off by putting in some of that color that was that I showed you in that one photo. And by into doing that, I want to start with uh, I'm going to start with some fairly bright yellow. This is my lightest, brightest. It's a cad yellow light hue, and I want to put some of that just right across this middle. I'm going to go a little a little warmer. This is a gamboge. I'm going to put some of that in here, kind of um, let that kind of, and I'm going to switch to a maybe even a little orange, go a little orange here. So these, these colors reflect and uh, should give me some good base for my painting as I get going in it. Now I'm going to take a little cerulean blue and put some color up into the sky and tone it down as I get into this area of the um, of these warm tones that I have bleed it right into it and let it kind of blend right in I don't want to have too much separation from those areas now on the bottom portion 
I need to repeat the same thing. This is just a repeating pattern in this water. There is a there are some ripples in the water, so there's some differences in how the how the reflection happens. But nevertheless, it's, it's similar. I'm going to add a little bit of this orange into mine. Um, it just kind of tones back that blue. It's a complement, really, of blue. So. And when I get down lower to the bottom of the page, um, there's going to be, a, I have to go a little bit darker to pull that forward. Now on the photograph, it looks pretty light at the bottom, but typically you're gonna to wanna to go a little bit deeper to kind of drag your eye forward. Now there's several things about perspective that, that uh, help you think about perspective. It's not always, linear perspective and lines. Um, it also has to do with um, the use of um, such things as aerial perspective, distance, and then of course in the values. Um, um, I'm going to put a little violet down in here and darken that a little bit and maybe even put a little burnt sienna just to Burnt sienna is kind of a complement of the um, of these uh, blues that I have in there, so it'll it'll tone it back a little bit. So I have another angle here. You can see how wet that is uh, when I switch to that angle. Uh, pretty pretty wet and pretty saturated. Um, but I have a couple things more to do, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna. Um, ask Eric a little later here to uh, uh, kill some time while I dry it because I'm going to need to go in and you're going to make me work. You're going to make me work. I'm going to make you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, after that, then you can take a nap. <laughs> um, so I, I need to look at the, um, the, the, the amount of moisture I've got in on the paper right now in terms of what I do next. There's a, there's a point where uh, with watercolor, you have to kind of get, really get used to the to the to the differences in how much moisture is there so when you wet the paper down like this you're you're putting water down and then you're putting pigment with water in it and so all of it is pretty saturated and you have to really be careful if i put something in there at this point um i might uh, really lose the lose the control of it so i have to wait just a little bit so i'm talking <laughs> one of the things about uh, watercolor again is that uh, the atmosphere has a lot to do with what your what your results are going to be. If it's a real humid day, it takes longer to dry, and so you can have a it's a tendency to be more messy with your painting. Uh, things can get sloppy. Um, the and if it's real dry, it, they dry so fast you you can't do anything that's 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 real juicy. Um, I painted in China last year and, and we were in this very dry part of, of China and it was really difficult. I had a tough time. Then we moved down to the coast of Qingdao and it was much easier to paint there. Um, when you get to an area like that and then sometimes, you know, doing plein air like that and then doing plein air, I've done it in places where I've had to go in my, into my car and dry my paper, you know, under the, with the heater, turn the heater on and the defroster blowing and try to get the um, the water out of it. So this brush here I'm gonna use is a long Neef uh, Taclon fibered uh, rigger. It's really a rigger, but it's real long and I'm gonna use it in a kind of a unique way. I'm gonna make the clouds with that. So I'm gonna use some uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, my usual mix. I make a stew, I call it, and I kind of create a stew that I work from uh, so I have this sort of gray, blue-gray. I'm going to add some uh, alizarin crimson to make it a little more violet. Maybe a little more blue. I'm sort of, you know, concocting this color that I like here. Now, um, one of the things I'm going to try to do is take a look and see what that color is. To me, it's uh, a little dull. It needs to be a little more, a little more red in it. Let's put a little... There we go. I could use some straight violet, but. And then um, when I do this, I like to um, also, because I've got these bright colors, I like to pick up a little bit of this stuff in my palette over here, this little bit of orange, put a little of that on the side of my brush. And I just 
spray this thing out as much as I can here and see what I can come up with. Now, where do these clouds belong? Um, I'm thinking that they need to go be a little bit bigger here and go that direction. So let's just start here and see what we end up with. So here's where my larger clouds are going to hang. And see, it's already drying a little bit up there. I have a misting bottle, spray bottle, that helps a little bit with this kind of thing. So here are um, some wispy clouds drifting in off the gulf. And because the sun is behind over here, you don't have to get too detailed and worry about the shapes, um, trying to create this this um, three-dimensional shape for these clouds because they, um, they're they the kind of clouds, because they're backlit like that, you really don't have to do that that much. You're just indicating some shapes and letting it letting it happen. So when you do watercolor like this, it's a, a lot of a lot of it's about knowing the paper and the water watercolor um, the way it works. This and and appropriately, there are questions about the kind of paper you're using uh, and the kind of paint you're using and the kind of brush you're using. All right, good questions. Um, the paper I'm using right now is an Arches um, 140 pound rough. Uh, you may not be able to see the texture. It's a little more textured than the Arches regular. It's kind of my, my main go-to paper. Um, the paints um, are a variety. I have a, a lot of Daniel Smith paints, uh, some M. Graham paints. I have a Winsor & Newton. My burnt sienna is my Winsor & Newton. I have some um, Holbein. I have a lot of Holbein up here that are um, opaque colors. Um, so I use those in various places in various ways. Um, so that's, you know, kind of a mixture. Um, this particular brush is a, um, 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 I, like I mentioned a little earlier, it's, a, it's from Australia. It's a Neef uh, long rigger. And you could use any kind of brush. You just have to have a brush that you can do that, you know, kind of make it spread out. You could use anything, a hake brush or, or anything. A lot of times... Um, one of the things that I like to talk about when I'm teaching watercolor is that there, it, it isn't so much which brush. The, the biggest thing is the paper. If you have good paper and you get used to a certain paper or get used to the way these papers work, that's the biggest thing. It could be any kind of paint, any kind of quality paint uh, will still work, and any kind of brush. Brushes and tools like this are just there for making marks. I mean, they're mark-making tools. Uh, you can use your fingers, you can use your, you know, you can use a paper towel, you can use anything in watercolor, especially. You, that, it's just about making those marks that work for you. Now, if this was a little bit more wet, I would go down in here and make some larger um, bands of color. I won't do that now. I'm going to dry this thing, and I'll try to get that in there later, uh, at a later point, and see if we can make it work. So, um, let me, uh, Erica, this is where I'm going to mute my mic for about a minute while I dry this. You mean we don't get to listen to the hair dryer? If you want. <laughs> no, we don't want to listen to a hair dryer. All right, I'm off. <laughs> well, I think this is fascinating. It's nice to see a hair dryer that doesn't actually make any noise for a change. <laughs> I I was, uh, when he was doing the clouds, I was like, oh, those don't look like clouds to me. But once they started running in the water, they really did. And uh, really terrific. I think that every painter tends to find colors that they like. And, you know, the nice thing about colors is you, you experiment from every manufacturer. And I, I just went through this. Matter of fact, I could show it to you. Well, I don't have it handy, but I did a color chart recently. I was trying to work on skin tones. And uh, I so I, I started trying some different base foundational colors. One was a burnt umber, of all things. And... I tried three or four different burnt umbers and then I, you know, I lightened them and with, you know, with white and so on. And then I added different colors to them. And though I ended up picking one burnt umber over all the others, cause you know, some were a little bit too red, some were a little too gray. And so you're always looking for the right color that is a, a fit for you. And that's why Michael is saying, you know, that he had a, a, a raw sienna or a burnt sienna from one manufacturer, but you know, every manufacturer has, 
superstar colors, you know, that some of those manufacturers it like everybody uses and then some of them not. Are you back? I am back. Yes. How did I do fill in time? You did. I mean, it sounded like you ended just when I ended. So I, I did. And you could, I, it's the, could. all those years of radio training and, and you did perfectly. You ended right on time. Okay. I'm going to turn it back over to you now. All right. So um, now that it's dry, you know, uh, you can tell, usually you can tell if it's a little cool, it may still be a little damp. There may be a little bit of dampness left, but uh, it's okay. I don't want to, I don't want to keep going. The biggest thing again for watercolor artists, um, beginners and my students a lot of times is, is not letting your layers dry. Let them dry good or dry them with a dryer. The dryer can be a killer. It can smush your colors down. That's uh, a technical term, by the way, smush. And um, so you, you want to do it, you know, when it's when they've settled in a little bit, not do it to, um, you know, too much, uh, too, not do it too early when it's really wet, because you want to let those colors find their own little place within the within the uh, texture of the paper. Uh, I have a horizontal uh, horizon line that I've drawn here, and I have a vertical line I've drawn here, which you may not be able to see, but I, I just did that because I wouldn't usually draw that. But I'm going to put some masks up behind over here and bring down some. I'm making a cruciform design out of this a horizontal here and a vertical here to kind of bring your eye into this portion of the painting and then have my most of my, my strong darks and lights in here. So I'm going to go in now and quickly do a, a middle value uh, in through this with a little variety. And um, but I think before I do that, I'm, I'm going to um, I'm going to do a little bit of I'm going to, uh, I think I'm just going to spritz this bottom here and put a little moisture on here. And I'm going to put a little bit of um, see if that works. See if that's enough moisture. I want to darken this a little bit down in the bottom with some bands. You can see a little bit on the on the paint, on the thing I did before. There's some undulation-looking um, bands here. That's typically what happens in, in water. I just want to see if if I can enhance that at all um, with a little bit of a little more color down on the bottom and. Um, no, I should have done that while it was wet, uh, you know, so this is probably going to be less than perfect. Um, but I want to do this before I come down into the rest of the painting. I think we'll be okay with that. It's not, it's not perfect. Um, one thing about wet into wet, you, you 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 don't have much control, but you have these wonderful gradations and 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 it, watercolor, you know, and the principles of design. Um, gradation is one of those principles, and one of the most um, simplest things about watercolor are are the gradations. It's the it's the one thing that uh, watercolor has um, going for it that. Uh, you, you, I, mean, I love oils too, but you just can't get the same kind of gradations uh, in oils. Well, I shouldn't say you can't. You have to work at it. You couldn't do it as quickly as I just did all this. Okay, I'm going to take some of this stew that I have right here. It's mostly blue and it's very light. And I'm just going to start over here and put a, this is like a tree line, horizon line in the back. It was actually an island in out in the Gulf of um, uh, Mexico. And then I'm going to darken up this a little bit because on the photo, everything is pretty dark, um, very dark, uh, middle value dark. And it's just going to get, um, I'm just going to get colors. I'm going to drop in colors. I'm going to change colors as I go. But I need a, va I need a nice pile of color here to work with. And I'll just start with that. And it's, I just need to make a, and I'm going to do it rather quickly so I don't, uh, bore you all and I don't have a lot of time Eric is tight with his time right now I don't know what the deal is well I'm always tight with my time because uh, what happens is that some of the platforms YouTube Instagram etc will cut us off at exactly one hour oh wow ah so it's and, and you know if you can't do a painting in an hour I mean what good are you anyway right That's absolutely absolutely <laughs> an hour is really good amount of time and watercolor you know one of the beauties of watercolor is that it um, 
it is it is one of those that you can really do quickly if you um, you know have a plan. One of my steps in my seven steps, um, since you brought that up earlier, is the plan stage. You know, you've got to have a plan for uh, for your for your painting. You can't um, uh, just go willy nilly into it and try try to hit uh, hit something that's going to really work if you haven't really thought it through. And um, and um, I have a friend who's a portrait painter, and he he was very kind and complimentary about watercolor. And he said watercolor is is the uh, the ultimate performance art. <laughs> and uh, I think there's some truth in that. It's uh, there's something about the, uh, the watercolor, the way it can be. Um, applied and the, the the speed with which you can get it accomplished that is very unique to uh, to painting I'd say so here are these these columns and I'm um, I don't want to spend too much time uh, making them perfect but I have them drawn in so I can just knock them in there's stuff back here um, the British watercolorist um, Robert Wade um, was has been quoted, and I love this quote. He says, "If you see a jumble with a British accent, of course, if you see a jumble, paint a jumble." And um, that is uh, that is something that I think everyone should think about when you see something. Paint that. Don't worry about whether it's a uh, you know, what is this thing that I'm working on? And I'm being um, a little more um, sort of abstract with some of this, just trying to create this shape. Then I, then I might, um, now there's a little boat over here that I haven't done yet, but I'll probably have to come back to him. Watercolor, at a, I'm painting at a little bit of an angle so that it, it, it the gravity comes down and my, my bead of, of wetness is at the bottom. And that way I can, uh, I can just, um, um, just work my way right down. Now over here, this is where the, there are um, parts of this um, are, are open because they're, they're windows into these boats here and into these cabins of these boats. And I may not get this all um, precisely uh, drawn in in terms of the shapes here. I just need to... Do you it doesn't really that matter. one brush the whole time? Uh, on this in this one right now, yeah, this is... I don't want to switch right now. I've got to keep this thing moving, so... Uh, if I... You know, and I could go in here with a flat brush or a different brush and do something. I'm going to shift the color a little bit, add some red into this. Um, so my stew then becomes another another color. That's not a window there. You're making me hungry. I'm going to need some stew for lunch. Absolutely, it's uh, it, it is it, you know. And what I what I uh, this is one of my workshop thingies. Uh, it, I if you you know if stew is a little too uh, to warm it up, you just add a little red, a little peppers or something like that, and to cool it down, you add a little little green, you know, some collards or something. I don't know. Um, now this, uh, this, this part down in here, um, I want to make sure I get to it before it's still damp. There's a, there's a portion right in here that is going to be, let me do this other boat. Um, let me just shift the color a little bit to, uh, use some of the cerulean and stuff I have here and do this little boat over here. Just need to get something over here. This, this. And I'm just going to add some water to it, have it gradate down a little bit. And, and I'm going to use this wet right in here to create this shape that, that is in the way water makes this, this undulating passage when, it, when the waves come through. And then this portion becomes um, also 
it's all pretty pretty wet in here uh, there's most of this goes right into the same value the same color well, the color the color reflecting off the water changes some, you know, some because there's, you know, water has its own characteristic, and, and the sh more shallow the water is, the more you see what's below, of course, and that can have an effect on how this all works. But now this there's a quite a bit of reflection off the back of this boat, so I just want to leave a lot of that, and then I'll start leaving some little ripples here and there. And so what I'm trying to do here is as quickly as I can create this shape. And there's a piling that's creating a shape down here. Another one over here. So those are the, uh, and, and you don't have to be, you know, real particular about them. You can, you can, you know, this is an abstraction anyway. Okay, that's so that I like to work in in pieces like this. So that one chunk is basically one big passage of color. I'm gonna bring it over into this over here now. So here's a um, there's a boat right here in the front of a boat, and that goes there. And there's another. I see there's a piling over here that should come up in here. I didn't draw in. But I like the shape of that, so let's put that in. Uh, and here's the, uh, I'm going to save the back of that boat for a second. Let's go to some turquoise. Um, this, I like this cobalt teal a lot. And this color is, um, there's a color not quite like that. It's a little more cobalt right in here. But I'm going to throw in some, a little more colorful note here. It's a lid, I think, of a, um, of, a, of a cargo hold or something. I think it's a fishing boat, and they open them up, and, and they have, um, um, you know, it's where they keep their, their catch or whatever. So let's just use that same color on the top of this boat right here and let that be part of the signature of that boat. Now this one then becomes a little less detailed. This one over here has a little more a little more detail with it because it is um, closer. It's also a part of the boat that or part of the painting that I want to have more detail. And I don't care if these things bleed into each other. I actually prefer that with this kind of a painting because your eye uh, if you're looking into the sun, anytime you're looking into the sun, all the colors, for instance, are, are uh, diminished in their hue and intensity. They become much more somber. And also, you, don't, you can't see all the details that you would see if you were... Um, now, if you're out there in person and you're, you can squint down, uh, you can see more. But uh, and photo photographs capture a lot, but they basically they lie a lot too. They don't really give you the truth. Um, so by um, throwing some darker hues in here. Now this um, this area of this boat on the side is um, you know it, it's in shadow, so I could put any any kind of color in here I wanted, and um, it's got to be you know um, cool because it's in shadow. One of the things about boats and things like this is there are certainly lots of areas for for um, textures and, and so right in here I'm going to put some this is quinacridone rust which is a, a basically it's a burnt sienna on steroids and there's rust on the side of a boat so I'm just going to drop some rusty things into here um, 
might be some stuff like that up in here. Just throw in some little spots of color here and there. And you know, even 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 uh, in in watercolor, you can always just drop in water. This is just I'll just put some water in there and let that do something. You know, you don't know what's going to happen, but sometimes you get some nice effects by just using water, and it'll push away the pigments and give you some interesting uh, effects. So now I've got to make a little more. Uh, I love this gray that I had over here. Let's see if I can find a little. It looks a little violet, so maybe I'll put a little. Alizarin in there, but I love that. And um, see if I can't make this use some of those same colors. I don't want to be too different from that side. Now on this photo, there's a um, there's um, all the it's all dark over here on this side. But I'm going to uh, cheat it a little bit, I'd say, and, and um, you know, I like the silhouette. I like the shapes of the bow of the boat. Eric, when you're up at the up at the lake, do you um, do you sail up there? Well, I, I'm not much of a sailor. We have a little um, sunfish. Oh, I love it. once in a while, but. No, that's usually the kids or my wife. They're the big sailors. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a little metal boat, a little, um, just a little uh, rowboat with a motor, and I'll go out painting in that. So awesome. if I yeah. have time, I'm going to go painting instead of sailing. Uh, well, sailing is, uh, is, is, is one of those things. Yeah, it just sort of is a sort of like painting in a way. It's relaxing. It's, um, it's kind of calming. I used to like to sail. I don't now at all. I mean, I, I still like to, but I just don't. We live in Texas, you know. I suppose I, there are lakes around, but they're all um, they're all dammed up reservoirs. You know that, right there. I think I've read there's only one natural lake in Texas. Everything else is dammed up reservoirs. Yeah, yeah it's the Caddo Lake over in uh, in uh, on the border of I guess Louisiana so I'm going to put some more sh masks up over there and things so I'm going to make some more lines down on this side than I that are on the photo and some uh, breaks here um, and let's see so this is it doesn't really matter so much the colors here I mean I'm just putting just dipping into my stew and and just creating this uh, shape again. Um, there is a, um, a, a distinct edge now, edge at the bottom of these boats. Over here there is one, and over here there is one. And I want to do that while it's wet, but I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, I don't think I'm going to do it over there. I think I'm going to save this this extra detail for this boat in front, so it it gives me that feeling that the boat is a little more detailed, a little more a little closer to me. And it's wet now. This is still wet, so it's going to just bleed and look a lot like what you see in the photo. So one of the things about uh, watercolor, again, is I think the fun part is trying to capture um, certain things in a quick amount of time as, as you can. And one of the things that I, I like to call it a, a shorthand, you have an opportunity to, uh, with very minimal brush strokes, create a shorthand that is, um, uh, you know, represents something and gives you a, um, a view that you're, that you're looking for. And it's, it's really just a symbol for what, is, um, for what it is you're trying to do. Now, in this case, on this painting, there's clouds which are just, you know, drops of paint put into the wet, into that wet background. And, um, you know, if it's trees, it, it may be, uh, you just put some wet into wet into a background and it creates this, this image of these trees. It's gonna make this a little less dominant over here by a little graying it out a little. Um, now, um, my, masts and things like that on these 
these are fishing boats, so I'm not really thinking mass. I'm gonna use a different brush, but it's the same brand and the same kind. It's just smaller. This is a um, this is a uh, Princeton Velvet Touch Long Round. That's one of my favorites. Now they they're longer and um, they have a great point, and they help to um, to um, you know you can still do areas because they hold a lot, but they're they're very uh, <clears throat> um, nice and pointed so here's a uh, there's a part of a all these and i don't want it too dark <clears throat> so i'm gonna put some um and i'm <clears throat> putting these um marks in just uh quickly a little bit randomly but I am looking at what's what's there on the on this photo. Well, actually, on the photo, I, I had uh, on this photo that you might see there. You see that over a little further to the left. There are some of these boat things, and those are um, that was photoshopped. In. I had wanted to play some uh, some boat rigging behind there, so I was in Photoshop and I just dropped in uh, dropped in some some things there, and. Uh, So if you're ever in a you know in a waterfront area, there's all kinds of verticals. Um, some are ropes, and some are you know um, masts. Some are you know different kinds of rigging. There's uh, you know boats like this have radar things on top. Um, there's just all kinds of various things. If you go around, and there's nets. If you're in a place where they're 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 actually using the boat for, for um, netting there's there's just lots of lots of paraphernalia that can give you those verticals so it's nice to have the, to break up <clears throat> the area on a painting with some vertical uh, spacings like that so here we are uh, pretty much everything I want to do in the middle value uh, and I call it middle but it's it, it's it's pretty dark as you can see um, so let's, uh, I'll show you, we'll, we'll go into some other even darker darks, but I'm going to try to keep those over here on this portion. Now, um, I painted this before and I put a figure in. Uh, I didn't have time to to uh, really get too carried away with the figure there. So um, I avoided it. Now, I, you know, I still could do that. I could throw in a figure here uh, pretty easily. It's just a, you know, usually in, in watercolor like this, you're you're just trying to make an impression that there's some kind of a figure there. You're not trying to uh, get overly detailed with it. So let's see what I can do. I'll make a little darker pool here. Uh, still the same colors, uh, my, my stew. Make it a little bit violet, pull up a little bit of this violet here. So in this area around around this uh, opening here where this um, 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 what am I trying to say here where that opening in that that container is so this part here is dark back in here and I want to make sure I don't uh, that I let it make the gradation down to a lighter value too. So I take a little water in my brush and then just just wet it, let it dr you know, uh, drift down into a lighter value. Over here, this part is, um, this is a window here. Put that in because I think that'll help define the shape a little bit or define the boat cabin. Um, there are some uh, letters here that create a, that, you know, I guess the letters of the boat, you have to have some, it's like the name, I guess, on a, I'm not a very much of an expert on boats, quite frankly, but. Yeah, well, there's usually license plate letters. I mean, not a plate, but numbers. 
some kind of license Operation numbers. Yeah. You know, I was uh, things I paint. You know, if I paint trees, I always, you know, I feel like <clears throat> I'm not an arborist. So I'm afraid I'm painting a tree that really isn't an actual tree. <laughs> or if I'm doing boat rigging, I'm not a, you know, some people paint the rigging very accurately and, and are very good at that. And, um, I guess I'm just too much of a impressionist. I don't really try that hard. How are we doing for time, Eric? Uh, we're doing, uh, we got about five minutes and let's see. Yeah, about, about five minutes. You're getting an incredibly sharp line out of that brush. Yeah, this thing is incredible. Uh, this one's pretty new. They get worn down. They're not, they're a synthetic fiber, but it's uh, it's just a really great Which brush. Which one is that again? This is the, the uh, Princeton Velvet Touch Long Round. And because it's longer than a than your normal round, it's got it, the, the point just comes way out and just and that you know the larger one is what I use for almost all of this first part. Uh, you know, doing all that shape there. So these these are going to have you a little darker in here and coming off, and there's some there's some dock, some dark stuff and some dock in here. I'm not going to do every part of this, but a, a little bit just to kind of get your eye to move across here. Um, separate some shapes. Uh, there's a window, a uh, window of a boat right here. I'll do that. Of the cabin on this one back there. There's always in this line, this little thing is, is kind of nice and pointed. So you got you always have ropes, you know, coming off of things. You have um, you know ropes and and uh, you can use use this for fine lines or or um, might be a rope dangling off this boat here back into the water. That got a little thick there, but. <clears throat> so this um this turquoise i put in here a little bit bright uh in some ways and i probably should have had it reflecting into the water down here a little bit anyway just drop some in just for for the sake of uh, some kind of accuracy also uh let's put a little like it's on this boat here now um this this you know and I don't think I need to do much more with the foreground water now uh, you know I could go in here wet this down and put some more of these bands of of, of ripple that I that I did uh, you know I did before and you see those have now got pretty light but it works I but think it, it reads as water yeah I think it reads as as, as water it reads right uh, I don't think I need to do any more I I kind of think I need to I'd like to darken that background a little bit over here my eyes going over there and i really want your eye to go up in here and then over that way so i'm going to just tone this back here i'm gonna put some put some uh, some objects or something back in here um just you know gradation get that a little bit less dominant your eye goes to those, you know, the lightest light and darkest dark, you know, wherever your eye, your eye is going to go to those places. It's like a, like a spotlight on a stage that's dimly lit and you have this spotlight and that's where your eye is going to go. That's why, that's where the theater people want your eye to go. And uh, in a case of uh, a painter, you want to have um, the person's eye go to where you want it to go, not... Uh, not off the page, typically. So, yeah, tone that back a little bit. We got a, just about a, a minute and a half left. Time flies when you're having fun, Michael. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not panicking. I think I've got it. You know, there's some things I would do to this to finish it up. Now, 
one of the things I, my seven steps, well, this is not one of my seven steps, but usually I end up with a sloppy spot somewhere where I, where I put, you know, I got paint. So that becomes a bird. I always have to have a bird or two. And um, we'll have to put those in. A lot of birds by the water. <clears throat> my, uh, but my seventh step in my, on those videos is the, the easiest one really. And that's to sign it. You are, um, you're the one who created it. You're the one who did it. You own it. It's yours. Um, take, take pride in it and sign it. That's the, that's the end of the, the deal. And may, you know, you may not be done with it. You may have to come back and add some, uh, some details or something, but, um, in this case here, I'm just going to put my name on it. And uh, I'm a signature member of the National Watercolor Society, so I can put that on. American Impressionist Society, I'll put that one on. And several others, but if I, I don't want to get uh, too carried away. <laughs> Let me take the tape off when you can really see it. Uh, it's much easier to see with the tape off. Get more like a mat, but it's um, I don't have a mat cut just right for this. So I'll do it this way. And um, yeah, one more. And we're getting getting down to the uh, final seconds, I bet, huh? We are, but it's beautiful. Hey, a thumbs up and applause for Michael Holter. Thank you, thank you. That's a beautiful piece. And uh, of course, you can find Michael at michaelholter.com. I should remind everybody that Michael has two fabulous videos out. One is called The Seven Steps to Watercolor Portraits. The other is called The Seven Steps to Watercolor Landscapes. And both are available uh, probably on your website, but also at lilyartvideo.com. Just search Michael Holter uh, or creativecatalyst.com. So uh, either one of those. Michael, this is, oh, wow, you're all fancy now. You got, oh, yeah. I, this this is a I'm all I'm all over the place. <laughs> oh, I'm impressed. I'll have to find out how you do that. Uh, I can show you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Michael, thank you so much.